Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we will be taking a look at what is currently taking place across the Atlantic Basin and what might happen as we're going to be heading into the next week or so. And so before I go into details, Okay, and we are starting off with a view of the Atlantic Basin right now. And so we are seeing that we have some areas of showers and thunderstorms that are noted. We have a blob out in the Atlantic Basin and that is associated with a tropical wave that is interacting with the surface trough. And over in the Gulf of Mexico, moving into Texas, we have that air of deep convection that is actually a disturbance. So let us go ahead and talk about that right now. And so looking at the National Hurricane Center's five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, we're seeing that we have it. It is marked as uh, in yellow and yellow indicates that the formation chance is low. So actually there is a 10% chance for this to possibly develop and Really, development is not expected of this disturbance. And so it is going to be making its way further into Texas and it's going to be bringing along with it a lot of heavy rainfall. And so looking at it on Salet, here we have it. So if you're in southern Texas, maybe even portions of the of northeastern Mexico, you will likely feel some rainfall uh, as this thing is going to be making its way by. So be aware of all of that precipitation that is up ahead for you guys. But aside from that disturbance in Vest 98L, there is nothing else that is out there at this time. And so we are still waiting on Danielle. So letter D is yet uh, to be for a named storm. And that is probably going to be happening before this month. And, and so let's go ahead and take a look at what the ensemble tracks are showing starting off with Euro. And this is by Wednesday the 24th of August and we're seeing that we have some of the members showing that maybe we will see a tropical wave try to become something out there as it makes its way to the west and as for GFS only seen a few members uh, expecting that to possibly happen but this is a little bit earlier on the 23rd of August and so we definitely have to wait and see what's going to be happening but things are pretty quiet out there and the main inhibiting factor uh, throughout this hurricane season is the dry air so looking at the dry air map right now we're seeing that we have some saharan dust that is still out there of course in the atlantic basin and a bit that is making its way across some portions of the caribbean and this is a very very hostile environment for tropical waves whenever they uh, move right into a region of dry air we typically don't have any shower and thunderstorm development because of course they need moisture and dry air is just the opposite of that so that is what we have been seeing a lot throughout this hurricane season this dry air just preventing waves from developing there were even some waves uh, that even had a bit of vorticity but because of all the dry air there were no showers and thunderstorms so they were a bit vague out there so let's wait and see what's going to be happening throughout the rest of this month but uh, i still think that there is a good chance that we could see the next name storm before the end of august but going to september that is the time when we really have to be on the lookout for tropical cyclones so looking at this map it is showing the typical tracks and origins of uh tropical cyclones and so most of them will come from the atlantic basin from from the main development region from those tropical waves that make their way off Africa and accelerate westward into the optimum conditions. And so areas that definitely have to pay attention to tropical cyclones at this time of year are the Caribbean, uh, the Gulf Coast and the East Coast of the US. So let's see if there is going to be any significant tropical cyclones especially in the gulf of mexico for the past several years there has been at least one major hurricane that rapidly intensifies just before landfall so last year that was ida 2020 was laura in 2019 there wasn't actually a major hurricane but there was hurricane barrier which was a category one and in 2018 there was a michael category five hurricane that rapidly intensified before making landfall along the florida panhandle so so let's see if this year is going to be uh, a year where we actually have yet another major hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico or if we won't see that happening. But as I said in previous videos, I think that we might see a season a bit similar to 2019 uh, where there were 18 named storms that year. So let's see what the rest of 2022 has to offer. But as of right now, 
things are quiet with a resumption in activity expected soon. And so let's go ahead and take a look at something else, the El Nino Southern Oscillation or ENSO. So the latest value for it is minus 0.776. And so that is... And so this temperature has really been decreasing. Uh, this is how much we are below normal here. And so once we are below minus 0.5, we are in a La Nina. And as you can see from this graph, we are having a decrease uh, in the temperature of the Enso. And so once we have a cooler conditions over there, we have more favorable conditions in the Atlantic Basin because there is less interference from the Pacific. So that is going to be helping in terms of the wind shear. But once we have a decrease in all that drier things will be even more favorable for tropical cyclones to develop especially from those tropical waves and ocean temperatures are already uh, very favorable in the regions that typically have development so coming from the coast of africa as we head closer to the caribbean things get warmer the gulf of mexico is well on its way as well as off the southeastern coast of the u.s so once we have that favorable wind shear, as well as a lot of moisture, very moist environment, let's see if in those hot spots we will have anything major develop. And so this map is courtesy of the Climate Prediction Center, and uh, the next update should be this week by the midweek. And so we are taking a look at the Atlantic Basin. So as I mentioned in my previous video, we have that area that is highlighted with those red and white stripes that indicates the possible development of a tropical cyclone. So let us wait and see if they're going to be consistent with this possibly happening by next week or if they're going to be expecting something else but uh, as we saw for the ensemble tracks we had a euro that was showing that something is going to maybe try to develop out there and a few ensemble members from the GFS were also expecting that but as I said we have to wait and see what is going to be happening but even though this hurricane season has been a little bit quiet so far we still have to be on alert and not just take this to predict the rest of the season to say things are going to be quiet remember it only takes one storm to do some massive destruction uh, for example Ida last year Ida was a category four and it made landfall along the Gulf Coast of the U.S. and it didn't stop there all the way up to the northeast. It caused massive destruction, uh, especially in terms of all the flooding that took place. So it only takes one storm to really be the talk of the hurricane season, guys. And so, of course, I'm going to be keeping you updated as time goes by. And that is really it for this update video. And if you found it to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up. And you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question. I'll try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be weatherwise.